Good afternoon. Many of you in here, like most, have had stories told to you about your families, your descendants, your arrival to this great country. And most of you have similarities. Similarities of crossing Ellis Island, signing documents, welcome into the new world, and lands of opportunity. I too, my family had the, you know, very similarities, with the exception of slave ships, shackled, landing, hurtled in like cattle, signing papers, coming to a world of harsh reality. My name is George Thompson. I'm happy to stand here to be the voice of my ancestors, to those who could not speak, those who would not speak because of fear, but to tell the story. Not very long ago, I was born here in Charlottesville, Virginia, during the years of massive resistance. This is right after desegregation. And I have to tell you, the University of Virginia was not always a great place. My mother labored five children. However, when she was brought here, she did not have the privilege of entering the medical center like her white counterparts. We were hurtled in through a side building. She went into labor in a separate labor room. The baby was born. Food was given to her, not like her white counterparts. Oh, no, 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 you can work here, but you don't sit here. <laughs> but nevertheless, we persevered. As I became a young man to start school, again, my mother wanted, and my father, my father's deceased, so if I speak about my mom, it's because she's here with me. But as they wanted me to have a really good education, they thought about enrolling me into one of the private schools here. Of course, the interview starts on the phone, and it was like, yes, we will have you in for the interview. Nevertheless, once she arrived there and she saw that she was not a Caucasian, it was, uh, you just been served, but we can't bring your son in because the others would be taken out. But that was okay, we went on. As I mentioned, we were going through massive resistance here, so a lot of the schools were shut down, schools were held in basements, churches, wherever. My elder sister and her friends were part of the groups that helped integrate schools here in the area, such as Lane High School and Albemarle High School. They too, like Dr. Penn, were up against a lot of things. Some of the things that I went through as a seven-year-old once schools um, were forced to, to take us in, I'm gonna back up and let you know first how my parents are. My dad was one of set, think, talk it out. My mother was in real time. And if you don't know what real time is, think about a true, strong, black matriarch. <laughs> so my first day of school, I was prepared to what I may face as being called in names, maybe pushed or shoved, and of course, my father's like, think about it, be strong, and just eat a little humble pie. Mother, on the other hand, was real time. Yes, yeah, set, think, and serve up. <laughs> Never to know that the first day I was met with a lot of hello, hi, and then the humble pie came up with the harshness of nigger, get out the slap in the face, and the spit. So I have on shoulder number one, dad, on the other side, mom, speak, think, or real time. So the smart aleck as I am, I sort of like reality of both, spoke and then served up. Only to be sitting in front of the principal's office not because of what had happened to me, but what I had done. This was the harsh reality of separate but equal. Moving forward, as a young person, we wanted to go to movies, but here in the area, you had separate entrance. 
If you're a person of color, you entered the side and you went to the balcony. You did not enter the front door. That was reality. Thank goodness things have changed. As my life moved forward, some of the harsh realities of being a person of color, being segregated, degraded, things began to change. And I was with the list of a lot of my counterparts who were the first of. Some of those same students who called me names, who uh, spit on me, et cetera, became my best friends. I became one of the first black school presidents, honor student, leader of the band. My cousins and all were all part of the same thing. In fact, one of my cousins were one of the first black mayors here. Some of you may even say, oh, knowing my family, and I don't have time to go through the whole, time, uh, whole thing, but some of the names such as Howard, Barber, Wheeler, Goings, were some of the first families here. And as you know, blacks took on names of their slave masters. So yes, in essence, yeah, I was blue blood, yeah, first family, all of that. But welcome to reality, it was not all of that. As you can remember the events of August 12th, 2017, to a lot of us, it was an event that opened up wounds that had once healed. Yes, it was bad. I commend this university for standing tall. I commend our new president who has given me a lot of hope, President Ryan. We need to move forward. Racism, bigotry, hatred has no place anywhere, anywhere. We have to stand up to it. The needless acts of patients such as my mother who had an experience during that time to come for a surgery only due to the physician who was supposed to take care of it decided that he had another patient to take care of. So she was left with one who didn't know anything about it, practically a med student, who left her with a horrific scar. And it was terrible. So the mindset of, oh, I don't want to go here, or I don't want to go to University of Virginia because they're just going to experiment with me. I'm just going to be a laboratory experiment. You can understand why. Hopefully, these things have changed. And it takes each and every one of you in here to make that change. Every one of you. And yes, I will not allude to say that it was only on one side. Because yes, there are stories of those who were white who were also discriminated against. With the events of August 12th, my husband, who's sitting here, who also went down to stand, to face, and to speak up for all of us as well. He said, George, it's mostly my people who are doing the bad side, and I need to be the voice. And I commend him for that. I didn't want him to go down. But he came back. He said, you know, that 20 minutes, 30 minutes, he said, I was scared. I was scared to death. And my comment was, I am so sorry that you were scared. But welcome to reality, I'm scared all the time. This is what we've had to face. So again, I just want to say, hatred, bigotry, discrimination has no place. My name is George Thompson, and this is our story. Thank you.